Good morning class and welcome to Game Dev Academy. In today's video you will learn how to take the 3D models from Google Maps and get them into Unreal Engine 5, although the same method will work for any other game engine. This is perfect for helping you to create an environment based on a real place or to have recognisable landmarks in the background of your level. Before we jump into it though, I'm excited to tell you that this video is sponsored by Core. Core is a new game creation platform that makes it easy to create, publish and play games. And it's free! If you're new to game development, then Core is a great place to start learning, especially if you're aiming to get a 3D multiplayer game set up quickly, because Core takes care of some of the really complicated stuff, like multiplayer networking, for you. You don't need to know how to code, and that means you can jump in and get started with making games straight away, by making use of thousands of free music, sound and even art assets. Even though Core is perfect for beginners, you can also roll up your sleeves and get down and dirty to create your own game logic. This means that you can build your own games from scratch, or even remix or reimagine content that's been created by other Core creators. Once you're ready to share your masterpiece with the world, you can publish your game and it will go live instantly on the Core platform, all at the click of a button. In case you're wondering if Core is the real deal, they recently raised $100 million in financing from various investors, including none other than Epic Games. And they've also announced a 50-50 revenue split with creators using the Core platform to share their projects. That's twice as much as Roblox's current revenue share, and 10 times what Fortnite Creative shares with its creators. Many creators on Core are also using their revenue share to pay their bills, buy dream cars, and even quit their day jobs. If you want to give it a try, Core is hosting the Invitational Game Jam, which runs from the 12th of August to the 13th of September, so that's a great opportunity to get to know the platform and win a share of $140,000 worth of prizes, including the chance to win a Tesla Model 3. The deadline to submit your application is the 1st of August, only 50 creators will be accepted, and all accepted creators will receive $1,000 to support their game dev dreams. So, thanks to Core for sponsoring this video. Remember, Core is free to use, so make sure you check them out by following the link in the video description. I'll leave a link to details of the game jam down there too. Right, let's jump into the tutorial then. So what I'm going to be doing is taking Wembley Stadium from Google Maps, uh, which is the site of England's recent oh-so-near in the European Cup final. We lost on penalties. I'm not bitter about it, I'm not going to cry. Before we can get that though, we need to make sure that we have everything we will need, which is the following. You're going to need Unreal Engine, so either 4 or 5, I'm going to be using Unreal Engine 5. You will need Blender, you're going to need Google Chrome, an application called RenderDoc, and then a plugin for Blender called Maps Models Importer. All of the software that you need for this is free and everything is linked in the description below. Make sure you're using the same versions of the software as me to ensure that you get the same results as I do. Let's move on to step one then and get everything downloaded and installed. So if you don't already have it, installing Unreal Engine 5 is really straightforward. You need to open the Epic Games Launcher. You'll see on the left hand side Unreal Engine listed. You can then go to the Unreal Engine tab at the top and then you will see this screen which gives you the option to download the early access build of Unreal Engine 5 and that's all there is to that so get that one installing and then we can move on to installing Blender. Installing Blender is pretty straightforward I start with googling download Blender that takes me to the blender.org website where I can click the download button and that will start it downloading. Once it's done downloading click on the file and then go through the process of installing it. I can't install it again, so I'll just click on repair. And when it's done, you'll be told that it's successful and that's that one done. Let's move on. Next up, we need to download and install an application called RenderDoc. And this is what we actually use to extract the 3D model data from maps using Chrome. So if we go to the renderdoc.org website, which is linked in the description for you, we need to just click below the download button on the other builds link and then just scroll down to the all stable builds section and you want to make sure you get the same version as me which is going to be version 1.9 I'm getting the 64-bit version there is also a 32-bit version and I'm getting the installer version so that I can just set it up pretty easily once you've finished downloading it just run the installer it's a pretty basic installer and then I chose to do a complete installation. 
And that's all you need to do for this one. Once that's installed, you're almost ready to go. We just need to install the plugin for Blender, which we'll do now. The plugin that we need is called Maps Models Importer. And if you use the link in the description below, it will take you to this web page. To download it, you'll just need to scroll down the page a little bit to the installation section and click on the release link there. I've just taken the one that's at the top. So if you just click on the link there, it will take you to the page where you can download it. And there's the zip file there under the assets section. Once you've downloaded it, you'll just need to get it installed. In order to do that, you need to first of all open Blender, have a look in the edit menu, find preferences and open that up. By default, it's opened up for me on the add on section. In that section, there's an install button to click, find the zip file that you've just downloaded and then install it. It should install without any problems, but if you want to check that it did, you can search for it using the search functionality in this window and it will show up and it should have a tick in the box to show that it's also active. Assuming that's all good, you're ready to move on and we've got everything that we need. I'm not gonna take you through the process of installing Google Chrome because if you can't do that by yourself, there's not really much hope for you and you're on your own. Okay then, now that we have everything that we need, it's the moment of truth. We're gonna start getting this data from Google Maps. You can see that I'm on my desktop. It's really important that you don't have any of the applications open when we start this, especially Google Chrome, because it won't work if you do. So the first thing that I want to do then is open RenderDoc. So we'll get that open first. You can see that it's one of my recently added applications, so we'll get that open. I don't want to update it because I specifically want the version I've got. And then we can just ignore that for now, but we'll come back to it in a second. Now, the next thing we need to do is open Google Chrome, but we've got to do it in a very specific way for this process to work. And the way that we're gonna do it is through command prompt. So I'm just gonna open my Windows launcher and type CMD, and there's command prompt. And this is what we need, because we need to input some additional instructions when we open Google Chrome. And I'll show you what they are. So the first thing that we need to type in here is this set render doc hook egl zero and that just gets the render doc plugin ready to work so we'll just press enter on that and then the next thing we need to do is get this text here so this first part is where the chrome application is installed to this is a default location for me so it's probably going to be the same for you but if it's not, this is the bit that you need to update. And then you've got these two instructions, disable the GPU sandbox. And we also want a startup dialog, which you'll see in a minute. I will make sure that both of these lines of text are available in the video description. So you can just copy and paste them in if you want, because it, it saves time. I just copied and pasted them in. Why would, you, why would you waste time? So let's press enter on that. So it does this, but the bit that we're looking for, let's just find it, is this. GPU starting with PID, which I think is process ID, and it gives you a number. That's the bit that we need to see, 1264. It will be a different number for you, and it's a different number every time. So 1264, we go back to render doc, and then we go to file, inject into process. And then we search for that process, 1264. There it is, Chrome. And this is the GPU. So we want this application to be able to listen to what's happening on the GPU to kind of extract the data. It's very clever. Okay, so we click on that and then the little inject button is down here. We give it a click. Brilliant, that's a good start, hopefully. Now what we're gonna do is go here, click on okay. And you can see that this is now linked. It's established and it sees the API for me as Direct3D 11. So that's all good. So now we go to Chrome and we can see that it's worked because it adds some extra text up here. If you don't see that, the process is not going to work. Assuming you do see that, you can now go to Google Maps. Okay, so I'm going to go to Wembley Stadium and we need to get the 3D data on there. So I'm just gonna go down here to layers and click on satellite. And if you're not seeing the 3D geometry, just click on more and click on globe view here. That makes it 3D. To check that it's 3D, hold your control button. And as you then left click and mouse around, you can see that we've got some 3D geometry here. That's brilliant. And what you will need to do is if you zoom in on your target, which in my case is Wembley Stadium, you'll see that it kind of implements its own level of detail. So what you'll want to do is just zoom in on things and make sure that it loads in the highest level of detail. 
just scroll around make sure you're getting really close you can see that better textures pop in really try your best to get as much detail to come in as you can there you go look they pop in uh, i don't think that crane's going to get any better but it's worth spending a couple of minutes i'm going to rush this because i'm just doing it for the video but spend a couple of minutes getting the higher quality versions of these models to load in and you'll get a better result then what you want to do is zoom out a little bit don't zoom out too far we don't want the lower quality versions of the models to load in and then just go top down on the thing that you want to save which for me is the stadium that's what i'm going for and then leave it there for now we're now going to just bring the render dock window back and i recommend putting a delay on this i'm going to put five seconds in because i need to switch windows and start it moving the window that's displaying google maps needs to be moving when it does the capture and then the gpu gets all the data you want so i put five seconds in there i'm going to click on the capture after delay button like that and then we go back into maps quickly and i just click and drag and start moving you'll see a little bit of lag when it captures just there and then we go back to render dock and you should see this that means it's worked basically as long as you've got one of those it's going to be 122 megabytes happy flipping days right so assuming you've got that that means you've now extracted the data from google maps and we just need to save it as something else so we're going to right click on here save and i'll give it a name wembley and i'm putting it on my desktop for being able to find it easily and then click on save okay that's that step done then in the next step we're going to import that into blender so let's jump into that now so make sure you open blender Okay, we'll get rid of the default cube. We also don't need that. And I don't even know what that is. I'll leave that because I don't know what it is. Right, what we're gonna do now is go to File, Import. And because we've added the plugin, Google Maps Capture is listed here. So we'll click on that. Go to Desktop, and there's the Wembley file that I've saved. And then once you've found it, you click on Import Google Maps, and it might take up to about a minute for this to import. There we go then, mine has just finished importing, didn't take quite a minute. And if we zoom in on it, you can see that the geometry has come in pretty nicely. You can see that it is recognizably what we just were viewing on Google Maps. And what's really cool about this as well, is that if we just click up here to turn on shading, it also brings with it the textures. So this looks pretty darn nifty, I think. Unfortunately, the geometry is made up of multiple pieces, generally set into uh, grid squares, which is clearly how Google Maps works. And the geometry is not the tidiest, but that is now ready for us to export out of Blender. So let's do that. We're going to go to File. Let me just deselect. File, Export, and we're going to choose FBX, which is something that we know Unreal Engine likes to work with. So I'm going to make sure that I'm putting it on the desktop again for the ease of finding it and we'll just call this Wembley again Wembley there we go and we'll export it and that my friends is so far so good the next step involves getting it into the engine so we'll take a look at that now okay then so here we are in a new Unreal Engine project so I'm in Unreal Engine 5 pretty straightforward stuff this and it's just a project that I've created for the purposes of showing you this. So you can see you've got your real default third person view. So let's look at how we import this. And I'm just going to make a folder for it. So let's create a new folder. We're just going to call it Maps Import. And we'll open that up. And then in this folder, we'll click on the Import button. Let's go to our desktop. And there's Wembley. So let's click on Open. Now, there's a few things that we really need to make sure we do on this. It is made up of multiple meshes, and we need to make sure that these are combined, otherwise things are going to be really messy. So let's click on Combine Meshes. That's really going to help. Then what we want to do is just scroll down to where the materials are, and we do want it to create new materials, and we do want it to import textures. That's all pretty good. So now what we do is just click on Import. So when it imports, you will see that there are some warnings, but nothing that's going to break what we want to do. So we can close that window like so. And then this one here should be the mesh. You can see one of the problems with this, though, let's just um, expand this, 
is that it does import a buttload of textures, which is a little bit upsetting. And it also adds a hell of a lot of materials as well. There are ways to tidy this up. I would do that in Maya and I would bake maps. I might even use Substance Painter to help me with it. Uh, if you're interested in seeing how I do that so that I turn it into one mesh, use one texture and one material, leave me a comment down below and we'll have a look at that. Uh, what we want to do though is just find that mesh again. There it is. And we're just going to drop that into our level. Lovely. You can see that at the moment we can't see any of the textures on there. Oh, some are popping in actually because it's currently compiling the shaders. And you can see that there's obviously an issue with the scale as well. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move it out there. And let's scale it up by, let's go 100 times. Like that. And this might still be too small. And also, zero is not in the right place. Let's just do what we can with it. So we're just going to try and get the height about right and we're going to move it out into the distance a little bit. So what I'm kind of looking for is to be able to see this environment from within the level. Kind of poking out over the top if you're the player. So you can see that that's a little bit too low. That should do it. And I think the scale might not be bad now, actually. I've done it by 100. It might need to be a little bit more than that. But if we were to play... Oh. <laughs> we do have an issue. It's created um, it's created collisions, which is a problem for us. Because our player's getting stuck on the collisions. So we might just need to turn that off. So we'll just open up the static mesh editor. And then if you search for collisions up at the top here, you can go for collisions preset. And I'm just going to go for no collision. That will help. Brilliant, and then we'll save that. And we can close that, and then we'll just try again to see what it looks like from inside. Okay, yes, yeah, so we now do get this uh, impression that there is some geometry off in the background, which I think is a pretty neat trick. So you can see there are a few issues with it. It does work better from above, which is what it's kind of designed for, really. And there are some issues like Zed fighting. As I say, that is all solvable stuff. And you can get in quite close on it. And for the most part, the geometry holds up pretty well. And that's it. You have taken geometry and textures from Google Maps and you have got it set up and working in Unreal Engine 5. Well done you. Thanks for watching. If you found the video useful, please consider subscribing. Or if you want to support my work on Game Dev Academy, you could consider becoming a patron, just like these fine people did that you can see here. Also, don't forget to check out the Invitational Game Jam and to download Core using the links in the description. See you next time.